Hello everybody and welcome to my video. I'm making a dedicated Gmail server on Linux. Uh, so to start off, this should be compatible with any version of uh, Linux from Ubuntu 12.04 up, uh, mostly the Biden based distros. I cannot guarantee it'll work for Red Hat or anything else, but you shouldn't have any issues uh, with any of those distros. Just that this is designed for Ubuntu server or desktop 12.04 up so that if you're using that distro, the process should be exactly as I am doing it now. If you're using a different distro, it might be a little bit different, but this video could help you anyway. So I've got a clean install of Ubuntu Desktop 16.04 here. It's running on a VM on my local machine. Of course, you probably want you know, a VM or a physical machine running in your server separately somewhere else. It's not posted on your uh, you know, laptop's OS, but you get the idea. It'll work fine for demonstration purposes. Usually I would be using it in like a command line interface like this. Um, but just for simplicity's sake, I'll be using the Ubuntu desktop. I do recommend each of you know how to use SSH. Just SSH into the computer that's just running no GUI, just standard server OS, and just do it that way. But um, if you really aren't so comfortable with that, you can download the desktop version of Ubuntu, which does chew up a little bit more processing power, just you know, idling, drawing all of these GUI elements, but it uh, doesn't matter too much, probably. So there's a couple useful things here. There's I'll post both these in the description. Um, this is a page that describes how to install Gmod dedicated server pretty much on Linux. And it's very helpful. It kind of holds your hand a little bit, but the issue is that um, you're, you, you are going to run some problems if you're using this um, that you're not going to know how to get around. And um, that's what I'm here for pretty, pretty much. So this page explains how to fix those problems and we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So to start off, uh, what you have to do first, top of this page, is install Steam Command. Now Steam Command is pretty much like the server variant of just Steam. You can't launch games from it, it doesn't have a fancy GUI, it's just for downloading game files pretty much. So, um, the guide here tells you to make a directory called bin. We're not going to do that, we're going to make a Steam Command. So if you look here, I'm in my home folder, right, and if I type ls, we got all these folders here, and if you do this, you're going to have a folder called bin. But I'm going to make a directory called Steam command, just to kind of make it a little bit easier to follow. So, we're going to name it Steam command rather than bin. And we're going to do um, change directory to Steam command. So, next up, you got to download this file. WCAD just basically grabs a file from you know a web server, and uh, it's a .tar.gz file, which is basically the Linux equivalent of a zip file. And so, basically, you just need to download that and extract it. And this next command here basically does just that, it extracts it. It's like putting it through 7-zip or WinRAR or something and just basically extracting it. So we're going to put that command in once that's done. And that takes this file and it spits out all these guys. So if you look here, you start off with this file and it just extracted to be all these other ones. Which means that we can now remove Steam command. We can now re remove pretty much the zip files. We don't need it anymore. It's just wasting space. So what you would do next is you would type this in. But if you're running 64-bit Linux, which you almost certainly are, you're going to have that problem. And it gives you a little bit of a fix down here of uh, how to get around that, but it doesn't actually work because this uh, is a little bit out of date. If you're using Ubuntu 12.04, which you probably should be, um, this fix down on this page will work for you, but I'll show you uh, how to fix it properly with the newer version. So this page here will tell you how to fix it. This is just a general Steam command page on um, Valve's site. But uh, what we need to go to is we need to go to the part where it says, 32 bit libraries on 64 bit systems. And that's the error we're getting pretty much. So, for Debian based distributions such as Ubuntu, all you gotta do is install that. That's all you gotta do. And you're basically downloading those um, 32 bit binaries so that Steam Command, which is 32 bit, knows how to run a 64 bit system. So, I'll just wait for this to download. Alright, once that's done, basically you just copy this command down and you run it. What, what this will do is it'll run steam command, which is actually a shell script file, which is why it's a .sh, um, and it'll have it log in as anonymous and then quit as soon as it's done. So pretty much all it's going to do is it's going to update. My internet's horribly slow, so it's going to take a little while here. Okay, so there it goes. It's logging in now. And it just exited like we wanted to. So that means Steam Command is installed and working. So we're going to go back a directory to store home directory. And of course, we were just in the Steam Command directory right here. So the next step is installing Gary's Mod. So 
this just goes to your home directory like we just did. It's the same thing. So we're going to get update gmod.sh from this website here. It's basically what the command does. It goes really quick because it's a tiny little file. Um, and then before we can run it, however, um, this file right here, it's basically just seen as a text file, right? So you can go from the text editor, it's just a bunch of text. Um, you need to tell the computer to actually give executable rights to that, or else you can't run it. So we basically just paste that command in, and it makes it executable. So now if we go to ls and ls again, that's how it's green instead of white. It means you can execute it now. And there's this handy dandy little tool called DOS to Unix that will convert this file from DOS to well, Unix. And DOS is for Windows and Unix is for Linux, so we need to convert that. However, you're probably not going to have that package installed automatically, so you have to do sudo apt-get install DOS to Unix before we can use DOS to Unix. Because if you're trying to run that, it's going to tell you you don't have DOS to Unix, basically. So I'm just going to go ahead and download it and stuff that. After that's done, then we can run this next command. Perfect. And then we can run the file called updategmod.sh right here. However, you might want to make a few edits to it because I dug into this file and uh, I've written some Linux shell scripts in my time. I kind of understood what it did a little bit at least. And what it's doing is it's basically um, going to make a folder in your home directory because it operates under, you know, slash home slash dir called server1, but I don't want to call it server1, I want to call it gmod server. So we're going to save that. And again, if you're in there now, you go to control x exit, and it might ask you to save, at which point you hit yes. And now we're going to run it. And so we ran into a little bit of an issue, because we changed that directory, um, it doesn't know where to operate from. So we need to go into gmod.sh, because it doesn't know where steam command is. It's trying to find steam command on line 25. Um, this is a relative path here, which is kind of just stupid. I think what we'll do instead is we'll give the full path, which is slash home. For me, it's slash home, slash Scott, slash steam command, slash steam command dot sh. So we're just going to fix that so it points to the right place. Oops. Now try to run it again. There we go. Perfect. So it's logging in, and it's going to start downloading gmod to that folder in your home directory that I'll show you right now. Called gmod server and it's basically just downloading the files in here so this is going to take me probably several hours to download so i'll just go ahead and continue the video when that is complete okay so once that's done steam command will exit out so pretty much you've got all your server files downloaded under your folder called uh, gmod-server you could have also named it server one of course that was up to you basically you got your folder with your files under it so, the next step is to consider adding content to the server. Um, it explains it here, but basically what you do is you open up the update gmod.sh file, the text editor like nano, which is nice and easy to use, and you basically paste your extra uh, content you want to download right here. If you want to add tf2, basically what you do is you paste that in like so. And of course you need to know the app ID of the um, server you're, or the uh, game you're adding, you can look that up, like I said, you can look up CSS app ID, and you'll find uh, a list of Steam applications ID, IDs from Valve, where um, these uh, different IDs just correlate to the different games, like Team Fortress 2, yeah, Team Fortress 2 dedicated server. So if you want to download, you know, um, let's say, Left 4 Dead content, you could type in 560 instead, and type, it would download the Left 4 Dead content. But I'm not interested in that right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and exit out of that and move along. So the next step is to start the server. Uh, basically what you need to do is you need to type in this command, which runs srcds run. But I just figured out this guide is also incomplete in the way that it forgets to tell you to do something. Remember how when we did steam command, we needed to tell steam command to actually be executable because it was just a file? We need to do the same thing for srcds run. So if we go into the gmod server directory, we see that we got a few files, including srcds linux and srcds.run, that aren't runnable. I changed it so yours will show up as white, which means that it's not really executable. Um, but yeah, so basically what you need to do is you need to do chmod plus x srcds run. And that'll make it 
um, executable to this command will not fail. And it's also something else I recommend doing. Uh, it's not necessary, but you can type in this command here and get the server to run. But I'm going to make a script file um, in my main directory here. Um, that basically just runs the server, so I don't have to actually you know, type this in every time. So a script file is pretty simple. You just uh, use a text editor like nano, I recommend. We're going to call it gmod uh, start. It has to be a .sh. So um, basically what needs to happen is we need to tell the computer that it's a, it's a bash script file. Um, it also doesn't know how to actually open up the files. Basically, just, just do that in the top. And then you basically paste in your command down here. So if you recall, we didn't put it under the server one directory under our home folder. We put it in a folder called gmod-server. So it goes there and it runs srcds.run, which you just gave executable privileges a few commands ago. And it gives a few parameters, um, like game gear is mod, next player is 12, and it's going to be on flat grass. There's a lot more parameters that you can enter here, um, but those aren't there right now. Just for testing purposes, we don't really need to worry about that yet. So we're going to save that file, and we should be able to actually just go here and do dot slash gmod start. And just have a, okay, <laughs> excuse me, I forgot to do the thing we've already done twice, which is that you didn't make that file, we just made it executable. So, I've been chmod plus x gmod start.sh. So now we can do gmod start.sh. And uh, yeah, it's not good. So basically, I just forgot to do something really quick. I told you to do chmod plus x um, onto uh, gmod server onto SOCDS run, right? But I didn't do it to this one. So basically, we just need to do it for this one too. So we're going to do chmod plus x srcds x as well. And we're just going to go into the directory we were just in and go ahead and run that file again. See what happens. Um, I don't think this really matters that much. Uh, you can do it if it gives you that, just to make sure you're not going to run into any issues. But I have run GMOD servers and links before. It will give you a few issues uh, here and there that you really just don't need to worry about. This is kind of unimportant stuff. So the server is up and running. Um, and the next step is to test it. So I'm just going to go ahead and launch uh, Gmod right here in one moment. Okay, so I'm in Gmod. And of course, to connect to your server, you need to know uh, its IP. This is my public IP. Don't bother trying to hack me. There's nothing on this network. Um, but we're not connecting over that. We're on the same local area network as the server. And that. there's a lot of networking stuff that I myself understand that I just do not have the time to explain to you guys in this video because it's just out of the scope of this video but I urge you to understand at least enough networking so you know how to connect to your server. If it's on the same network as you, you should just be able to type your or find your IP address by typing that command right there which is 192.168.1.3. I recommend getting yourself a uh, static IP address which is again out of the scope of this video so that basically it doesn't change. So if it changes, you still, if it changes to .4 and I try to tell my Gmod to connect to three, it's obviously not going to work. And if you're running the server on the internet, you're going to need to go to like a whatsmyip.com or something, or just do this to find your external IP, at which point you probably port forward your gateway, your Gmod server, and there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen there that I really just cannot go over right now. So we're going to go to the console. I can open it, here we go. And just connect to that IP that we found earlier. Another really interesting, useful thing to do is uh, installing a, pro a program called HTOP to monitor your computer's CPU usage. So you can type top, it gives you a little bit of lame information about kind of what's going on in your computer, but if you go to apt-get install HTOP, it's a little program that I can show you right now that's actually really useful for just monitoring how loaded up your server is getting on CPU and memory and so forth. It's really quick to install, you just run by doing HTOP, and it tells you how it's doing. So currently I'm using up under a gig of my 4 gigs of memory on this VM and barely any of my quad-core CPU. So I'm on my server right now and the ping, it's reading a little bit high. It'll go down really low because, you know, connecting over local area network is basically nothing. So it works. Um, and that's pretty much all you need to know to get your server up and running. Gmod servers really don't take that much um, at all. Like SRCS Linux is taking up, you know, 110% of my CPU and 3% of memory, which is 
basically nothing. And there's a lot of threads there, but still, even with that in, uh, um, even with that being accounted for, it's good at taking that function. So, service function on my ping is 5, which is pretty great. And, um, next steps for you would probably be to customize your server a little bit more. Because right now it's just called Gary's mod, pretty much. So I'll go over in a moment how to add a little bit more parameters to your server to actually, um, make it the way you want it. So you type in quit to stop the uh, server that you were just in. Um, and then we're just going to go ahead and edit that file we made earlier that I called gmod start. So we're not going to run it, we're going to type in no. Okay, so, so there's actually a little bit of a better way to do this. Um, instead of editing all those parameters in that file you made earlier, what you can do is you can just edit the file called server.cfg. Uh, if there isn't one, you can just create it. Um, it's under this directory here, so if we do the full directory structure, it's under the home folder, gmod server folder we made, gears mod slash config, and it's called server.cfg. So we're going to open that up, and in there you can paste stuff like this. It's probably going to be clear for you, but uh, you can paste some parameters here. I recommend just doing Googling, uh, Google searches, I mean, for just the different kinds of uh, um, settings you can paste in right there. Um, you'll paste those in, and your server should be showing up as whatever name you put in um, that you want. The alternate to doing that file would be basically just putting those parameters in here. So you could type in, I don't know if it's plus or minus, but plus name, you know, whatever. But uh, just the server.config file is a little bit easier to use, I recommend doing that. Um, if you have any issues with it, you can try to figure it out through the batch file. So. With that, you should have plenty of configurability to your server. Um, but just one last thing I'd like to go over, and that is keeping your server alive after a reboot. There's something in Linux called a cron tab, which basically what it does is it starts up certain programs or applications um, at certain times. So if you type in cron tab minus E, um, you're actually basically going into your operating systems files, or settings, I mean, and changing your cron tab settings. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and use nano. It gives you different options here. So my cron tab is empty right now. Um, and what you could do is you could type in this right here into the cron tab. However, like, we, like I said earlier, we made that script file. So instead of calling this, um, what you would do is you would just type in at reboot, probably just a space and then it work fine. And I'll type in the full directory because I like doing it that way just in case anything kind of, you know, in case, just in case I do anything wrong. So Steam or uh, Gmod server. Excuse me, it's not like a Gmod server. It's just called Gmod start.sh. So that every time the computer starts up, it will start the Gmod start.sh uh, file. So that any settings you want to change to the server, you can either do in the server.config file or you can just edit in. Uh, gmod start sh and it'll automatically start every boot. But I don't really want that to happen, so I'm just going to remove that completely from the current tab, or rather just comment it out so it doesn't get into effect. But it's there absolutely if you do want it. So there's a lot more you can do with your server. You can go ahead and you can actually add uh, workshop content from Steam that you've created or other people have created onto the server if you want. But that's kind of, again, it's one of those things that's outside of the scope of this video. This is just for getting the Gmod server up and running. Because there's a million different configuration things that I just cannot go over in this video. So hopefully you, all of you found it informational and helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the description. So thank you all for watching, and uh, yeah.